How's it going guys? It's been forever since I've seen you, but I just thought I'd say hi, show you where I'm at. I haven't really made that much progress on the bug, but sometimes life just happens. On that note, what I decided to do is take a little bit of the paint down where appropriate to the metal. And I'm not gonna dig in, as you know, this bug's not gonna be perfect, and it's not gonna be a show car, and it's not even gonna be all that nice when I get done with it. But we're just having fun. So what I did is I started taking it down to metal, and I noticed something interesting. I noticed a bunch of scratch marks on the metal, which is a good indicator that somebody else has worked on the metal and tried to bend the metal out and wasn't quite able to get it right without filler, which is, that's okay. You're gonna have some scratches in the metal and using filler is appropriate. So if you look here, you can see that right in the shaded area where you probably can't see. Uh, <laughs> let's go over here. See how this, this white material, this kind of yellowish white material, that's actually filler. And you can see it, it's a little different from the normal colors of the car, which are yellow, green, and then of course this is actually white, not this yellow color, and then the green. There. Right here, right here what you have is filler, and that's okay, but what I did is I felt behind the metal and was able to determine that there's just a bunch of bumps there, and I don't really want to try to pound out the bumps better than the last guy. I learned that from the driver's side fender. I have a feeling I'm going to regret this in the morning. Sometimes when you're motivated, you have to just take action. Always take action when you're motivated. So this time, we're just gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna leave the filler on there. I just wanted to let you know, whoever ends up with this car, there is some body work here as well. Pretty much this is what I'm gonna expect you to understand before anybody makes a purchase on this car when it gets done. Don't buy it. <laughs> There's a lot of body work. This is just, this, this will be a really fun car to kick around town. I'm gonna put new brakes on it, make sure the brakes are at least solid. I know the brakes were done already, but they're pretty bad right now. I'm gonna end up putting a freshened up engine in it, or at least one that I've gone over and made sure is, is really solid. And as you can see, there's good tires on it. It's gonna be a good kick around car, but that's pretty much it. It might look nice, but it's not nice. It's like a good looking blonde woman you see standing on the street corner. She looks smoking hot. And then you get to talk to her and realize she has nothing substantive. Now, let me clarify, this does not mean that all bombshell blonde-headed women are stupid. That's not what I'm getting at. Draw your own conclusions. <laughs> anyway, this is where I'm at. Uh, I'm also pulling the, oh, I've pulled the gas tank out. And as you can see here, I went ahead, I've already primered a bunch of the bug. Not necessarily that I was ready to paint, but it was bare metal and it was starting to rust. So I had to go ahead and take the areas that I had sandblasted and sand it all down and get that going again uh, with the primer. Now this right here looks all right. I haven't done any sanding on it yet. One of the things a guy wants to do, especially over body work, is you wanna get like a skiff of primer over it and then take a sanding block over the top of it to kind of guide you. They call it a guide coat. And I haven't done that yet, but it looks good with flat, gray. I have a feeling if it was actual paint, it would look terrible. The one thing I will say, piece of warning, piece of advice, if you are gonna use a sandblaster, I highly recommend not sandblasting the interior of the car. There was about mm, 150 pounds of media on the inside of this car. I don't own a shop vac, so as you can imagine, I went ahead and did something awesome and just used a blow pack. That was messy. That was mess. Don't do this. <laughs> oh, this is just disgusting. And I did find some more areas of rust. Believe me or not, I am not fixing this rust. This area right here. This has rust on it. Know it has rust on it when you go to buy the car. I'm not fixing it. 
I'm not gonna fix it. I'm not gonna fix it. And this doesn't mean that I'm gonna fix it because I'm saying I'm not gonna fix it. This is a legitimate, I'm not gonna even worry about it. I just need to get this bug gone. Why do I need to get the bug gone? Well, that's because I have other bugs that I'd like to start working on. I have a bus that you don't even know about yet that I bought that I wanna start working on, which that, my friends, is gonna be the epitome of a ridiculous project. But for now, I still have to fix this bug up. I still have to fix this bug up. I still have to fix this bug up. And then there's the bug in the back of the house. That wonderful 68 standard beetle. Obviously standard, it's a 68. I live in a busy area. And people walk back and forth in front of my house all the time, stopping by, asking me questions about Volkswagens. Asking me to restore their Volkswagens, which I think is funny, considering they haven't seen a finished product from me, one. And two, this bug has been in this condition for about eight months. <laughs> anyway, uh, what a lot of people think is any bug after 1971 is a super beetle. That is, in fact, not the case. I believe they made the flat window super beetle through 72. I believe. I may be wrong on that. If I'm wrong, correct me. But all through the years, they made a standard and a super beetle from 1971 on. Now 1971 and I believe 1972 both have flat windshields and they're still super beetles. So how can you tell the difference, you ask? Well, there's a lot of different ways you can tell the difference between a super beetle and a standard beetle. But for the layman, the easiest way, and I don't have a super beetle to show you, but the easiest way is the front apron. So if you look at this front apron here, it's a solid front apron. Now, with a super beetle, this front apron is going to have grill in it. Have grill, have a grill, have grills? It's gonna have a grill in the front apron with the super beetle. And that's the easiest way you can tell the difference. Now, there are other aspects that I don't even know about that make a super beetle a super beetle. But I know the dimensions are different. I know the suspension is completely different. This suspension is a torsion suspension, whereas a Super Beetle is a McPherson strut. So how do you tell the difference? It's not because of the curved windshield, it's not because of the ear, necessarily. It's the easiest way is that front apron. Just a piece of advice. You don't have to listen to me, but hey, why not? You get free advice, I get to talk for free, I make new friends, like you. All right, I'm gonna finish sanding this down. I'm gonna put some paint over it. Um, if it's good enough, otherwise, I'm gonna move on. One thing I have discovered, I don't have to wait until I have all the time in the world to get this bug done. I can do a little bit at a time. So, today, I'm working on it for about an hour. That's it, that's all. That's all I'm gonna do, about an hour. And then yesterday, I worked on it for about an hour. And the day before, about an hour. I can just take little bite-sized pieces. I don't have to eat the whole elephant at the same time, blow up and chew weight in my stomach like a rhinoceros. I can just take a little tiny bit of pork and consume that and that gives me little wins, little successes, and it makes me happy. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Take care. Uh, yeah!